Right, hi everyone. <laughs> I can't believe it, this is the fourth time I've made this video. This is what it means to be a perfectionist. This is ridiculous. Okay, sorry. <laughs> good start, good start. You tuned in, have you? You tuned in? <laughs> okay. Oh, right, let's do it. In C2, essentially, why did we use binomial formula? Because we couldn't be asked to expand brackets. Let's just, let's just accept that fact, you know. I'm not going to write that out 10 times to expand that. You asked me to do 2 plus x to the cubed, I'll do it. 2 plus x to the 4, pushing it. 2 plus x to the 5, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, okay? And that's what the formula was about. So a plus b to the n was the same as uh, your n choose 0, a to the power of n minus 0, b to 0, plus n choose 1, a to the power of n minus 1, b to the 1, uh, n choose 2, a to the power of n minus 2, b squared, etc. But it ended, didn't it? And it ended with that. This was a finite expansion. It's a finite expansion where n, the power in question, you may or may not have realized that n was always a positive integer. That's what that fancy notation means. n is an element of the positive integer set right and it was essentially because we couldn't be asked to expand brackets in C4 though it's so much more poetic and beautiful okay the the binomial expansion and some of you may have been using this with your previous teacher um, so the formula for this is 1 plus x to the n and we need to know this formula is 1 plus nx plus n n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared and n minus 1 n minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed so that's our formula um, now this is used not to help us expand brackets anymore this has got a such a more valuable use and it's to approximate curves and this is what your calculator does all the time. So if you type in your calculator square root of 2.5, this uses a binomial expansion because it, it estimates the curve using a polynomial. I mean, this is what's so amazing about it. Any curve in this form, no matter what, what the numbers are, can be made to look like a polynomial, i.e., like a 1 plus x squared plus 3x cubed plus 4x to the 4 you know just a straight line of ascending powers of x now the proof behind this is actually using the Maclaurin series or the Taylor series in um, FP2 so it's a lot more advanced but you know we can talk about in class how this one turns into this one um, but I don't want to like kind of labor that too much here in this video so let's do it. Th this is to approximate curves and where n where n is not an integer. So n isn't a positive integer. It could be a fraction or it could be a negative number, okay? And this formula doesn't terminate. So this is infinite, okay? And it's used to approximate curves. I always want us to remember what we're doing this for. It's used to approximate curves, and therefore our calculators will have a series like that one in green um, for each problem that you have. Okay? So let's go for it. Uh, let's go and use this thing in reality. So we know our formula, and you need to know this well n, n minus 1, and you need to be really quick on your calculators. So in class, we're always going to be like, go, 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 you know, with our calculators. So here we go, there's our formula. I want to expand this thing up to x cubed. So I want to approximate what 1 over x plus 1 looks like, okay, as a polynomial. That's what the graph looks like. You can see that with a familiar graph. I want to approximate that in terms of 1 plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. Okay, so let's use the formula. So 1 plus x to the n, where n is minus 1. So straight in, 1 plus n x plus n, n minus 1. So I'm not going to waste time writing minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2. What a waste of time. 
And uh, sorry, I'm going to be quite blunt in this video because I've done this four times now. Okay. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Right. X cubed. Okay. And this thing never doesn't stop. Okay. So if we simplify that up, that's 1 minus x plus, it's plus because minus and minus cancel, 2 over 2 factorial is gone, so that's x squared. If you're not sure what factorial is, well 5 factorial is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 factorial is the same as 3 times 2 times 1. I did explain in previous videos what it was all about, and then I realized it was going on for ages, so again, stop me. Uh, <coughs> minus, minus, minus makes a minus. 3 factorial is the same as 6, and 1 times 2 times 3 is 6, so that's just gone. And you can see a pattern emerging here. So, this is my approximation at the moment. So I'm saying this thing is approximately equal to that thing. That's what the wavy lines means. So let's see what I mean by approximating curves. If I whack that into here, so y equals 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. There we go. It's the curve in blue. So you can see it's roughly matching the curve here, but everywhere else it's nowhere near. Everywhere else it's nowhere near. <coughs> that means that they, the two, my approximation and the real curve, are the same between these points here. So if I put in the same x value into both, I should get roughly the same y value. Okay? Let's try that now then. So let's try it with x equals 0 0.5. If I put 0 0.5 into my original, I get y is 1 over 1 plus 0 0.5. So that's 1 over 3 over 2. So that's the same as 2 over 3, which is 0 0.66 recurring. OK? If I put it into my approx, and remember they're meant to be roughly the same thing, x is 0 0.5, I get y is equal to, calculator time, 0.5, answer, 1 minus answer plus answer squared minus answer cubed is 5 over 8, which is the same as 0 0.625, close to 0 0.66, but no cigar. What was if I added more terms? Let's add more terms. So it's obvious what's happening with the pattern here. You know, if you kept the formula going, I'd get just opposite signs as the thing increases. So if I whack that into my autograph, um, da -da -da, da -da -da. so plus x to the 4 minus x to the 5 plus x to the 6 minus x to the power of 7 bang you see the curve here you see how closely it's matching it is looking better it looks to me though that it doesn't matter how many terms I add it's only gonna be right between 1 and minus 1 you can see that over here round x is minus 4 it's nowhere near okay you can see I'm going to get a negative y value here, but the blue curve is partying over here at minus 4, way up above, and we're going to see that in a second, okay? So if I whack more terms into my, so if I include these ones this time, I get y equals, let's go again, 0.5, 1 minus answer plus answer squared minus answer cubed plus answer to the power of 4. I made a really good joke in the last video as well. I'm really hacked off because I can't remember what the joke was. And now you'll never know. Minus answer to the power of 7. 85 over 128. So that's 0 0.6640625. Okay. Really close to 0.66 recurring. And if I added more terms, I'm pretty sure I would get there. Okay. But what was if we tried the minus 4? So you can see on the curve, the minus 4 seems way out. Well, let's prove that. So into my original, ugh, into my original, x equals minus 4, y is going to be 1 over 1 minus 4, which is minus a third. If I whack in x equals minus 4 into my approximation, though, might use that answer button trick, minus 4 equals 1 minus answer plus answer squared 
Minus answer cubed. I have to get someone to show me how to, you know, so I don't have to write that out every time. To the power of 6 minus answer to the power of 7, I get 2,000, sorry, 21,845. Wow, that is so far away. Can you see? This approximation is only valid between 1 and minus 1. Everything else gives me complete rubbish. And we can loosely prove that. Okay? Hopefully you can see from my approximation, maybe you can see it, this is a type of series you're familiar with in C2. This is a geometric series. Right? With A, the first term being 1, it's helpful if you're retaking C2, and R, the common ratio, what everything is being times by every time, is minus x. You know that the sum to infinity is 1 over 1 minus R, where R mod r is between 1 and minus 1. So if we apply this, the sum to convergence, i.e. the two curves converge to each other, a is 1, 1 and r is minus x, so minus minus x gives me plus x, and hurrah! I'm back to the original curve that I was actually trying to approximate, but r is minus x, and the mod of minus x, as you know, it's just x. So mod x must be less than 1. So this is valid, as the question asks, for mod x is less than 1. And you'll see that the pattern is whatever the value of x would be um, to make that thing 0, but positive. OK? There we go. Let's get more down to the nitty gritty as well then. So quote the formula. 1 plus x to the n, 1 plus nx plus n, n minus 1, 2 factorial. Why don't you try and race me? I dare you. Ah, I know what you're all thinking. Why would I want to race Scott on the binomial formula? Okay, there is the binomial formula. But we can't use it yet to expand this thing. I want to approximate this curve using the binomial formula, but I can't because it's not 1 at the start. It has to be 1 at the start in order for this formula to operate. So, not to worry, I can take out a 4, but I can't just take out a 4. It has to be 4 to the minus a half. This is where people mess up. In C4, you see a binomial question in your exam. You should be going, yes, this is guaranteed score as long as I can use my formula properly because we can check everything okay we can check if we're correct which we're going to do after this just like numerical methods just like uh, partial fractions just like algebraic long division just like pretty much all of c4 we can check everything why does it have to be to the half minus a half well think about it root 50 is the same as square root of 2 square root of 25 isn't it so that's the same as square root of 2 times 25 you see the power is the same so you can put them together if you have 3 squared times 5 squared, well, that's the same as 3 times 5 all squared. Do you see? As long as they're the same power, then you can put them together. So therefore, if we're taking stuff out, they need to have the same power. Okay? So the 4 divided by 4 is 1. The minus 2x is being divided by 4. So that's minus x over 2 to the minus a half. And now we can do it. So 4 to the power of minus a half is 1 over 2. And let's go for it. So 1 plus n. So I'm always putting in brackets all of my terms. Notice here we've got plus x. But here we have minus x over 2. So the whole thing goes in there. Okay, everything. So plus minus a half minus uh, 3 by 2. 2 factorial. The whole thing goes in there plus minus a half, minus 3 by 2, minus 5 by 2, 3 factorial, minus x by 2, all cubed. And we're done. Okay? Now we just need to sharpen up. So 1 plus x over 4, that's the same. And now this bit, remember this is everything squared. Again, so many people F this up because of that. Okay, times minus 3 by 2, this is where you need to be good with your calculator, okay? 
So if you put that in your calculator, please be doing this now, you should get plus 3 over 32x squared. If you're not, you're doing it wrong. You're putting in the calculator wrong. Just keep trying until you get it, okay? So minus a half, next one, times minus 3 by 2, times minus 5 by 2, divided by 3 factorial, all times minus a half cubed x cubed so this is plus 5 over 128 x cubed okay and then we can finally expand out so x over 8 3 over 64 5 over 256 x cubed and that is my approximation okay so I should say that this thing is approximately that but I should not leave it like this like I say we need to check and the best way to check is using point not 01 because point not 01 cubed as you know when you've got stuff to two decimal places if you cube it you're going to be correct to six decimal places because think about it point 01 cubed will go to point not 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 01 so if you do this point not 01 cubed that will go to six decimal places so you should be correct to 6 dp so if I whack x equals 0.01 into my original, so left hand side, I get again 0.01 answer button trick, race me, come on. 4 minus 2 answer to the power of minus 0.5, I get 0.50124707.1. If I put it into my approx, I should get the same to 6 dp. If I don't, then I've messed up. So half plus answer divided by 8 plus 3 divided by 64 answer squared plus 5 divided by 256 answer cu cubed. And I get 0 0.50124707. Pretty much bang on. So I'm really happy with that. I know that I've walked away from that question correct. And that feels good. Often binomial uh, is the first question on an exam. You want to walk away feeling really confident that, yes, I've got that first one down. What's this valid for? I said earlier, whatever value of x makes that thing 0. So mod x must be less than 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, 4, times, four minus 4, and it's gone, OK? You don't believe me, do you? I can't believe you don't believe me that that's that valid. Oh, fine, fine. I write it out. I put it in autograph. <laughs> as if I didn't want to show you I prepared it already so here's the original in red I want to prove that this is right between x is between uh, 2 and minus 1 there's my approximation so let's go for it it was a half and plus x divided by 8 you know when you watch your your mum and dad or your granddad or something type I bet that's how you feel when I type now, isn't it? You know, I used to think, uh, you old people. And now I'm turning into one of them. Okay, here we go. Bang. We're there. So blue is the approx. Red is the real. And look, they coincide here and here. So between minus 2 and 2. It doesn't matter how many terms I put in it will only match exactly between that zone. Any approximation, any x value I use outside of that will not give me an accurate answer. Let's do one last one then. So one last one. Uh, we're going to do this really quickly. So this time I've got 1 over 2 plus x to the half. I can't do anything with this. I can't do anything with this until it's in the form of everything at the top. You must put everything up to the top. And now we can use our formula, but we can't remember because we don't have a 1. So we take out the 2, but not just 2. 2 to the minus a half. 1 plus x over 2 to the minus a half. And now we can go for it. So that's 1 over root 2. 1 plus n x. Remember, it's plus this time, so in there it's plus. Plus minus a half, minus 3 by 2, 2 factorial, x over 2 all squared, plus 
minus a half, minus three by two, minus five by two, three factorial, x by two cubed. Okay, cool. <coughs> we just tidy this up. So one minus x by four. Uh, the rest of it's looking too horrible, so I'm going to switch to my calculator. Go to my auxiliary weapon. So one over root two. Sorry, one over minus one over two, minus three by two. Divide by two, divide by four, should get plus three over thirty-two x squared. Minus point five um, times three by two times five by two divided by six, which is three factorial divided by eight, and I get plus five, but it won't be plus, it will be minus. So minus 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 makes a minus. So minus five over one two eight x cubed. Not quite there yet, we just need to multiply out. So 1 over root 2 minus x over 4 root 2 plus 3 over 32 root 2 x squared minus 5 over 1 2 8 root 2 x cubed. And that's my approximation. I should check. I need to check that this is right before I do anything. So we'll quickly check 0.01 put in the left hand side so the original 0.01 remember this should be right to uh, 60p so 1 over 2 plus answer to the 0.5 and I get 0 0.705345615 cool so in the approx if I whack in 0.01 I get 1 over root 2 it's easier if you just leave the root 2 on the outside and then you can just work with it. So 1 minus answer divided by 4 plus 3 divided by 32 answer squared minus 5 divided by 1 to 8 answer cubed. And we get 0 0.705345615. Yes, we are correct to 60p. So we're happy that this is all good. Okay, now let's answer the rest of the question. The question says approximate just like your calculators do 1 over root 2.5 right this can be looked at if we take our original curve so we want to know what 1 over square root of 2.5 is yeah we have found what 1 over square root 2 plus x is and that thing was approximately equal to our expansion. So can you see what we have to do? If we want to find out what 1 over 2 point root 2.5 rooted is, we need to insert an x value. And it's clear that to get from there to there, x needs to be 0 0.5. So 1 over 2 plus 0 0.5 is the same as... 1 over root 2 minus 0 0.5 over 4 root 2 plus 3 over 32 root 2 0 0.5 squared minus 5 over 1 to 8 root 2 0 0.5 cubed. Are we allowed to use 0 0.5? Is it valid? Well, yes, because the x value that would make that thing 0 is 2, and we can put anything between 2 and minus 2 in, and it will be valid. So let's just check this. If I put in 0 0.5, what do I get for my approximation? Let's say leave the 1 over root 2 on the outside if you're using your calculators. 1 minus answer divided by 4 plus 3 over 32 <coughs> answer squared minus 5 divided by 1 to 8 answer cubed. So I get that 1 over root 2.5 is approximately equal to 0 0.63183857891 is the original now if we check the original 1 over uh, root 2.5 original is 0 0.63245553 so we're close you see we're close and if we had more terms it would be even more accurate that's binomial, folks, and we're exactly 25.